How are we doing everyone? Welcome to the Adventure Together YouTube channel. My name is Al and today I'm going to be unboxing the Atlas Packs Adventure Backpack. Let's go! So if this is your first time tuning into the channel then welcome, thank you for joining me. Let me just tell you a little bit about the channel. Uh, this is a brand new channel, I started it in the start of April this year and it is now the end of April so I've been going less than a month. Why did I start the channel? I started it because I gave up my 9 to 5 about 6 months ago and I want to travel all around the world and I want to make videos of what I'm doing, you know, the countries I'm going, the cuisine that I'm eating, the people that I'm meeting, and I want to take you along for the journey. So join the journey, subscribe down below, and get in early so that you can be a hipster and say that you were here before it was cool to be here. So currently I am in Thailand and it is lockdown time. It is lockdown all over the world, but my question to you is, how is lockdown going for you? How are you doing? I hope that you're well. I hope that you're not going insane, stuck indoors all day. One thing I want to say before we do open up this pack is that I had heard really great things about Atlas and their communication and their customer service. A lot of the reviews out there that I saw were mentioning and highlighting how great they were at getting back to you and uh, how they were really responsive and went out of their way to help out people who were thinking about buying the pack and I had that experience as well. As I said it is locked down and I was a little bit worried that uh, this pack wouldn't reach me and I actually emailed Atlas Packs. I said to them do you think you could get the pack here by this day and this is what I want, this is what I need and within a couple of hours and it was on a Sunday afternoon the uh, founder himself Alan Henry got in touch and put my mind at ease and told me none of that would be a problem. So let's uh, get into this thing. Let's pull this open. Let's just say something about the box actually. It's got this nice branded box with the Atlas Packs logo here. What I really like about that is you know, you know straight away what it is. If you've ordered something off the internet, you know what it is. But uh, I just like that, it's a nice personal touch rather than just some brown packing box. Opening up here, got this uh, little message. Thank you and welcome to the family. That's a nice touch. So, opening this up, I should probably be doing this facing you guys. So, straight away you got that brown paper. That to me, I like that because I hate it when you order something and then it comes covered in plastic. And the brown paper is just so nice. It's better for the environment and it's a much better look. And there we go, there's the pack sat in there. Ooh. The best thing about getting new stuff is the stickers. A dirty pack is a happy pack. So. All right, so this is the pack here. You've got this really tough material and straight away you can feel the ICU inside. It's super solid, super sturdy and it keeps its shape. Around the bottom here, you've got this mud and whatever resistant. That's going to be good. Stands up on its own. So when you've got your camera gear in there and you need to put your pack down, I've got a dozen packs that you put them down and they immediately go. That's going to be really, really good. You want to just chuck that to the side, got your, your pack on like that, and you just want to put it down, and it doesn't just on you. You can put that down next to you, and you know that it's safe. So on the side, you've got these real heavy-duty handles, and at the uh, at the top here, there's another one there, so you can just carry your pack like that. Around the side, you've got this stretchy pocket here and you can probably put whatever it is, a lighting rig or a tripod and probably maybe a set of skis. You know, you've got the straps for them, you can chuck your skis up and go skiing with it. I wouldn't want to, but you know, what you want to do is up to you. Chuck that in there, that's got the strap up the top here, strap here, that's going to keep it nice and sturdy. These are cinch up nice and tight like that. Same on the other side, you've got your two straps there that are going to cinch it up nice and tight. Alright, starting at the bottom and working your way to the top. The bottom here, you've got this pocket and inside 
you got your tethered rain cover. I think the pack is water resistant anyway, but uh, if you're caught in a real downpour, you chuck this on. And then you go from having a stealthy black backpack to a funky blue backpack. All right, on the front here, as well as having a stretchy pocket each side, that are exactly the same size. You've got another stretchy pocket on the front here and this zippered pocket on the front that's inside. So you've got this pocket here and then you've got this pocket. The next one is this cover up here. So I'm just gonna take the lid off so I can get the zips around. And you've got these uh, ring pulls here with the loops on them. You probably put like a, a wired padlock or something through that to keep it safe when you need to. Get those down. Do you remember when you were at school and you used to write your name or your mum would sew your name into everything? If you want to, you can write your name and address on there. If found, please don't steal all my camera gear. And you've got a nice pocket there that fits my hand on. I've got pretty big hands and it fit, easily fits my hand in there. I think you only use hands as measurements for horses. Horses and now backpacks. This pocket goes all the way down so you can see from here. Let me roll that. So you can get so my hand goes there so up to this little string base that I've got my hand goes all the way that far deep so about this line where the rain cover is then you've got this mesh pocket here pockets upon pockets upon pockets you've got these three here they're quite thin pockets I can't imagine getting anything hugely bulky this one here let's see what we can fit into it so I've got a couple of things here. I've got a little bag with some socks and underwear and a few other bits and pieces. That's a pretty big bag there. I've got a Lonely Planet guide that I picked up. And I've got a 13 point something, 13.7 inch laptop here. This isn't the laptop sleeve, just showing you how much space you have. If you pack the rain cover better, you'll have a bit more space, but I've packed the rain cover quite badly. So let's uh, chuck the book in. That goes all the way to the bottom. And that one we're just gonna put there and zip it up. And with ease, and there's a fair bit of space left as well, but I don't want to bust the zippers. I'm really bad for that. I don't know if, if it's just me, but I usually overpack bags and barely get the zippers. I'm there trying to hold the zips together and move it inch by inch so that was another thing that appealed to me about this bag was not having to do that because I'd have enough space for everything I have so that there doesn't look too bulky at all and you've got a spare bit more space there that you can use that front bit and uh, not be stretching the pocket too much but that front pocket there is holding as I said it's not the laptop sleeve but it just shows you that you can get a fair bit into there with space to spare and not too much of a struggle. So, turning the bag over, you can see we've got the front pocket here. And let's just zip that up. And you see behind it, we've got this other pocket. And that is where your laptop sleeve is. And we've got another little pocket in front of it. So this is, like I said, my 13, nearly 14 inch laptop slips in there, it's got those zippers, you can probably pull them to the middle and then when you're carrying the bag in transit, nobody's getting into this pocket. So I like that, the way the laptop's hidden away. You've got the top that cinches down here, like that, and you can pull those straps in there quite easy goes in. I'm usually a fan of metal buckles, especially on um, big heavy backpacks, but uh, we'll see how these stand up. I don't know why more camera bag manufacturers don't use these metal buckles because these things go, and uh, I know that they're lightweight and you want to, but when you've already got a pack that weighs as much as uh, something like this will do once it's fully laden with camera gear, I think the addition of a couple of metal buckles it won't be too much difference. So underneath the hood there, underneath the lid, got another mesh pocket. And on top of the lid, we've got 
some of these little loops here that you can fasten stuff to. And this pocket in here. Ooh, what have I got in here? Spare zipper pulls. Put those back in there because I'm the sort of person who will lose that. I'll find it under the bed in a month or something. And then you've got a second larger pocket which goes opens up in this U-shape and you've got nice hard wearing material between the top of the lid and the bottom of the pocket and quite a bit of space in there. Checking on here, got the clothing bag, got the book. Oh, there's so much room on top. That's easy fits in there, no worries whatsoever. Let's try something bigger. I've got my foam low and pro box here. Loads of them. Easily fits in there, no worries. Doesn't it? It feels like it was made for something bigger. Let's try and chuck more stuff in. So we've got something bigger, we've got the low pro camera cube that I usually keep all my accessories in. So let's chuck this book in there. Let's see if we can fit. This will be the test. Wow, look at that. Everything fits into the lid. Now, I'll be honest with you, if you're doing that, you're not going to be using this mesh pocket for anything but some documents or maybe your car keys or whatever. And you're not going to be using this, but that whole lid looks like that and fits it quite nicely on top. So that's the lid. So also under the lid, we've got a pocket there, we've got this pocket for the laptop and we've got this front pocket here. So we've got pocket, pocket, pocket. We've got the main carry area for things that aren't camera related and aren't super flat, so we just undo this drawstring, that should be enough. And we have the main pocket here. So in here you've got space to put your camping gear or your clothing or whatever it is, and you can carry that around separately, but there's a pocket here to get in and out of the camera ICU. There's a fair bit of space there, and you can roll the drawstring up to give you space there if you need it. This pocket goes all the way down so if you've got like in documents you want to keep uh, a full copies of your insurance or whatever it is if you've got your travel insurance um, certificates or whatever it is that you've got you can just slip them down there in the center of the bag and you can you know that they're not going to get scrunched up or anything like that. So something that really sold me on this backpack was how you access the camera ICU in the back here. First of all, if I've got all that equipment on my back and I'm walking around, I don't want somebody who could be just going in and grabbing all of my stuff like this. So I was looking for a backpack that had rear access and something that a lot of backpacks do is they open up under the straps, which means you have to move the straps out of the way so that you can access it. But Atlas have this, access which opens up like that so not only is it on your back and it's nice and safe nobody's opening this so there's that and also once it opens you've got a whole ICU in front of you you're putting the pack down on the front so these straps aren't going in the mud although I guess if they're opening like that they're going in the mud but that's every backpack but it's not going in the mud like that with all of the weight of your camera gear on it, it's just the weight of the harness itself. And then you've got this, so let me tip it up the right way for you so, you, so it fits you. So you've got a lot of room here. And here, you've got access to whatever you've got in the top of the pack. You can just zip it that separately, so it's not you're not gonna open up your ICU and it's all gonna fall in but you can easily access it. You don't have to turn the bag over and start going through the top. On here, we've got this Velcro strap and that's where you can access the frame. 
which just pulls straight out of there. And then you've got your frame, and then the bag becomes a lot more flexible. If you want to take it onto, uh, onto the aircraft with you, you don't have to worry about the, uh, the restrictions. You can just take that, and then you cinch that down, and then it becomes carry-on size. I think with the frame it isn't carry-on size, but you can guarantee your ass that I'm going to be trying to get this onto a plane. So we we'll chuck that back in there. I don't think I'm getting this right. Is that there or there? Help me. I should have looked before I pulled this out. I think that's it. In the door here, you've got another mesh pocket. You've got a small pocket here, about an inch deep, all the way along with no divider. And another one here that's about an inch deep, no divider. And that's your door pocket. Now, just so that you know, we've chucked the laptop in here. And, okay, so you can get your laptop in there, but I actually saw a comment on someone else's video from Alan Henry who said that this is not built for carrying your laptop or your iPad because as you shut it, you're going to impact on these dividers and uh, probably do them damage. But just so you know, what kind of size this pocket is, it can fit a small laptop in there, but it's not a bias, that's not what it's made for. Something else about this backpack that is a big selling point for Atlas Packs is this, it's called the Origami Camera System, or something like that. And you pull these dividers out of the top third, and you've got a big loop here, and you pull that down, and now you've got less camera space which is exactly what you want when you've got a backpack like this, but there is a reason. When you pull the lid up and you go in through the drawstring at the top, you now have double the space to put random stuff. So if you've got more clothing or you're going out camping and you've really just got you know, a camera, a couple of lenses, maybe you've got a small drone that'll fit in there and you've, you've got double the space to put a tent, you've got, uh, you can put a cooker, you can put your ground sheet or whatever, and there's plenty of straps and pockets and everything like that available to put all of your ultralight camping gear as well as all of this. That's a really good system because that makes us so adaptable. So you got this really thick, heavy duty waist strap, which is really good because if you're carrying a huge amount of camera gear and it's really, really heavy, you don't want one of those tiny little straps. Uh, a lot of people hate or really don't like waist belts like this. I love them. Um, honestly, when I'm carrying a big, big, heavy pack, I always do the chest strap up and the waist. I just, it takes so much strain off of your shoulders. It distributes the weight over your whole body. It feels so much more comfortable, especially when you're trekking over rough ground for ages and ages and ages. Just to have the, the weights um, split. But if you don't like the waist belt, you got, it's all, it's only held in by a Velcro here. And then you can pull the waist belt out. I'm not going to do it now because I want to keep it and I'll probably ruin it and not be able to get it back. But just know that the option is there. If you really want to, you can take that off. And if you really want to as well, you can take this out. Now, before I get into that, you got here on the harness system, you've got load lifters. Now, you usually see these on hiking backpacks. You've got these load lifters which are help to take, alleviate some of the weight um, off of your shoulders by putting it more on the pack. So that's, that's a really great option there. And these are big, thick, heavy straps, and you can see from the angle that they come down, that they don't just come straight down over your body like a cheap backpack, that they just come over your shoulders and then hang down by your side. They come across there, and then they will They'll come across your shoulders and then take a route in across your chest. So you'll see that they come over and then inwards at an angle and then down your torso. So that they spread the weight fully over your torso, not just hanging off your, your back. So as we put that on, chest strap. You can see it's not just hanging off my shoulders. It's now spread down my pecs and then comes out under my ribs. If I put this together with this, and now it's sitting on my hips, and the upper bit is uh, spreading the weight along there. The more area that your 
the weight of your pack is spread across, the more it takes it off of your shoulders and it's a much more comfortable day for you. All right, getting back to the straps here. Just release that, that comes out. You can undo this and you've got that off. You've taken the weight belt out and then you've just got an easy carry like that. Okay, turning that over and here behind this mesh, you've got a ridge. That's my way of showing you that it's ridged. A ridged padded black plate here. So that uh, is supposed to increase airflow when your back's up against it. It's not against a solid surface and the air can go in and out and in and out. I like the fact that they've included it because it shows that they're making the effort to try and uh, think of every possible thing to make you a bit more comfortable. Underneath these straps here, we have another pocket and this one runs down the length of the pack as well. Not sure what you put in there, but you got something there. You got that pocket there that runs down behind the back plate all the way down. It's very tight. You're not really going to get too much into there, but it's an extra space that they thought about that's going to um, increase the amount that you can carry. So let's get into this waist belt. Inside the pockets of the waist belt, it doesn't feel like you can fit too much, but that's because you've got these huge fold out pockets here. So if you're walking along and you want to put your phone or you want to put a little compact camera or snacks, snacks is probably what it will be for, or your litter if you're on the trail and you've got nowhere else to put it. What I will probably use them for is when I'm going out shooting, you stick your wire in there, you stick your macro in there, you keep your telephoto on, you can easily keep lenses with you for quick access. So that's probably what I would use them for. It just shows that when they manufactured the bag, they just thought of as many different things to make your life easier. Even things like this, uh, this pull here. So open up the bag, grab hold of that. See that? So with the backpack, let's talk about the weatherproofing. On the zips here, you've got there's waxed zips that are weatherproof, so you're not going to get everything soaking wet if the water hits it or you have a water bottle go over or you're drinking your coffee and you accidentally spill it or something like that. These seams here, not waxed, but they do look like they are designed to be at least less penetrable by water. Big main zipper, big, thick, heavy duty zipper so that when you've got all that weight sitting on it so you've got the uh, camera gear and it's all come out of the ICU and it's sitting on this back plate and then you pick up the bag you know you're going to be picking up by anything you can go with. you got it sitting on the floor for some reason and you just go all the way that's on here you've got a big heavy duty zipper so that, that door doesn't just from the wear and tear rip open after time you've got a few little pull uh, little loops here to uh, attach stuff to like I said, you've got the big heavy duty handle there. So that's the pack. So let's talk about some of the things I like and what I don't like about the pack immediately because no pack is perfect. I like with the option of the origami system. So you can customize the bag to your specifications. If you need more clothing or you need more camping gear, you can, you've got the options to use this. You're not just gonna think, oh, I can't use my camera bag because there's no space for it. So it's a versatile is the word I was looking for. I like the uh, pockets. You've got this uh, pocket here. You've, you've got this pocket, but you've also got space underneath it that you can put stuff in. So I like that. So these in, these little ideas that just work about the bag. Like I said, I like the fact that it's rear access. It's better security for me. I'm always worried about my gear getting stolen out of my bag. Well, if I can't see it, and you've got something solid like this and somebody's fiddling around with the front, you never know whether or not they, there's someone there getting into it. I don't want to be paranoid over my shoulder as my lens being stolen, as my camera being stolen. So uh, I really like the rear access. I like the fact that the rear access is the whole door. Like I said before, we see that. I don't have to worry about where these straps are so that I get into it. I like that there's a laptop sleeve included. That's important to me as uh, a digital nomad. I don't really call myself that, but uh, I guess you could say I am carrying with a laptop and a camera. 
Um, as a digital nomad, carrying my laptop and worrying about where it's going to sit. I like that you've got all these little pockets and things to hide stuff in. I, I really like that. Um, what would have been better for me, honestly, is if the camera backpack was ICU and then the rest of the bag was all just one big pocket. But that's just if it was mine. I would like to see a water bladder area. See, if you're taking this hiking, I've got a three liter water bladder. Um, a lot of people don't like water bladders. I like mine. It's just so much easier to be hiking with a water bladder. Um, for me, I know that's just my preference. You might not like it. That's just like a little small thing for me. I'll find somewhere, I will find somewhere. And with a backpack like this, you, you will find a way to customize it to what you want. That's just something that I would like to see on the backpack itself. But otherwise, I like it. I can't wait to pack it up and see just how much it fits in. Once I get it all sorted, I'm gonna be doing a video what's in my camera bag and we can see exactly the amount of camera gear I'm carrying and why I need something this size to travel with. So I've got my phone here because I wanna go through some of the specs about this pack. Like you can check on the website, but I thought I'd tell you now. The pack is a 70 litre shell with a 50 litre carry. It is possible to get it onto a plane if you pull out that frame. You pull the frame out, you can make it carry on size. Um, and it says the height of the pack with the frame in is 24.75 inches, which is 63 centimeters, which is above airline carry by about four centimeters. With the frame out, it goes down to 55 centimeters. I think that's just one centimeter below, or maybe the same size as the limit. The width is 11 inches, which is 28 centimeters, and the depth is, if you compress it, it goes down to nine inches, which is 23 centimeters, and if you expand it, it's 13 inches, which is 33 centimeters. It says the weight is 6.7 pounds, which is three kilos, and with the origami camera system, you can, depending on where it is, you can expand it from 20 to 35 liters of carry space. So those are the specs. I think uh, there's a few other things like people have told, talked about how this is rated to so many hundreds of pounds of, of weight it can carry, which all you need to know is there's probably nothing that you're going to put in this pack that where you're going to lift that up suddenly and it's going to come loose. It's got some really detailed stitching on here, so I reckon I'm confident that it's going to, it's going to last as well. That is the Atlas Adventure Pack. If you've got any questions, just uh, comment down below asking me a question about this pack and I will do my best to answer it. I will be doing more videos on this pack. I'm gonna do how I've packed it. So in a couple of days, once I get around to packing all my stuff into it and seeing how it carries and taking it around, I'll let you know what configuration that uh, I'm using. Probably about six months down the road, once I'm backpacking around again and all this lockdown's complete and uh, over with, I'll tell you how it carries on a day-to-day -day thing when I'm getting on and off of buses and planes and boats and whatever it is that I'm doing, I will let you know how this is holding up and whether or not uh, it's worth the investment for you if you aren't already convinced. I can't wait personally to put this into action and just see how well it holds up. So if you've made it this far through the video, well done. I just need you to do one more thing, which is go down the bottom and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I've only just got started, but I will be posting content from all over the world, some fantastic shots from all different countries, and I would hate for you to miss it. So do yourself a favor, do the right thing. Go down, subscribe, leave a like, comment and just tell me what's going on. Join the journey, follow me along at Let's Adventure Together. Thank you for joining me. My name's Al. This is the Adventure Together YouTube channel. This is the Atlas Packs Adventure Pack, and I'll see you tomorrow.